We have all seen in movies and TV shows what happens when AI becomes too advanced and no longer aids humans but seeks to replace them. And for a while, we were able to rest in the comfort that this was in the far off future. Well, let me introduce to you ChatGPD. What is that, you might be asking? ChatGDP is a powerful artificial intelligence tool developed by OpenAI. One of the key features of ChatGDP is its ability to understand and respond to context. This means that it can carry on a conversation in a natural and coherent way, even when that conversation shifts to a brand new topic. And if you don't think it's as good as I'm making it out to be, you should, because everything I just shared with you was from me using it, asking to explain in a YouTube intro what ChatGDP is. Now, hold on. I know this seems like all gloom and doom in the beginning of the machine uprising, but since it's almost Christmas, I thought instead of talking about that, we should instead test it out to see how well it can do at writing me a Christmas sermon that I could share with my church. AKA, can this thing do my job better than I can? And should I be worried about it replacing me? Merry Christmas, by the way. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna see what it comes up with when I type in a few things. Uh, let's start by going um, Christmas sermon on Luke. Man, it's coming up with a ton of stuff. Look at it go. <laughs> it's making up a whole story. It's crazy. I've never used uh, this before. <laughs> Is that the whole thing? Uh, okay, here's what it says. Um, certainly, the story of the birth of Jesus as told in the Gospel of Luke is a beloved and well-known one. In Luke chapter 2, we read about the birth of Jesus in a small town of Bethlehem, as foretold by the prophet Micah. According to the passage, Mary and Joseph were traveling to Bethlehem because of a census that required everyone to register in the town of their ancestors. While they were there, Mary gave birth to Jesus and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. This story is full this story is filled with themes of hope, faith, and fulfillment of prophecy. It is a story that has inspired people for centuries and continues to be a source of hope, inspiration for people around the world. As we celebrate Christmas and the birth of Jesus, we can reflect on the message of hope and love that is at the heart of this story and strive to bring the message into the world through our words and actions. That is insane that this is what it came up with. That's, that's pretty good. What if we do something a little bit more? Sunday morning... Christmas sermon. I'm not going to give it any uh, passages. I just want to see what it comes up with when I type in Sunday morning Christmas sermon. Oh my God. It's doing, it's doing an entire outline. <laughs> this is crazy. This is insane. Oh my God. Look at this. It's, it's a three point sermon. Oh my goodness. Guys, <laughs> this is insane. It even has a closing prayer or a blessing. Are you serious? Oh my goodness. All right, let's 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 take a look at what, what it says here. It says, uh, here's a potential outline for a Christmas sermon, drawing on the story of the birth of Jesus as told in the Gospel of Luke. So again, it's using Luke, I don't know if it's because that's what I typed in before or not, but that's what it generated. So introduction, greet the congregation and introduce the theme of the sermon, the birth of Jesus and its significance. Already right there is something that I can tell you right now that I know many pastors who wouldn't even do this much. <laughs> this could actually be super helpful. Offer a brief overview of the passage from Luke 2 that will be the focus of the sermon. It's, it's getting a little bit more gen general, right? So it's not like out of the box, ready to go preach sermon. It's uh, it's more giving you some direction, which is kind of cool if you are kind of stuck. Uh, context, provide some background information about the historical and cultural context in which the story of Jesus' birth takes place. This could include information about the Roman Empire. This is so cool. The role of the consen uh, census and the prophecies about the coming of the Messiah. All of these things, yes, absolutely, you totally should. Then it's to the actual birth of Jesus here. Dive deeper into the story of Jesus' birth as told in Luke 2. 
highlight key details such as the journey to Bethlehem, the lack of room in the inn, and the humble beginnings in a manger. Reflect on the significance of these details and how they point to Jesus' identity as the Son of God and the Savior of the world. The meaning of Christmas. This should be good. Let's see. Explore the deeper meanings and significance of the Christmas story. This could include themes such as God's love for humanity, the fulfillment of prophecy, and the hope and joy that the birth of Jesus brings. Encourage the congregation to reflect on how they can bring the message of Christmas into their own lives and the world around them. This is similar to Luke Think. Uh, conclusion, though. Recap the main point of the sermon and encourage the congregation to continue to remember and celebrate the birth of Jesus throughout the Christmas season. Offer a closing prayer or blessing. That's, I mean, honestly, that would be a good... <laughs> If you hit all those things, that could be pretty good. That covers pretty much the gist of it. Wow. I'm I'm impressed. I didn't think it would do this well. All right. What if we just let's not do crystal. Uh, let's do week after sermon for week after Christmas. I was going to put Christian, but I feel like putting Sunday morning might be enough. Come up with anything might be blank. We might have stumped it this time. Ain't nobody got a good one for New Year's. Oh my God. It still came up with something. It's even going. It literally had a theme and everything talking about hope. Oh my goodness. So introduction, greet the congregation, introduce the theme of the sermon, hope. Okay, again, like real clear, real concise. I love it. Offer a brief oversight overview of the passage or passages that will be the focus of the sermon. See, it didn't provide any. So again, just something to know. We're going to give my final thoughts on all this in a minute here. Uh, explore the significance of hope in our lives and in the Christian faith. This could include discussing the definition of hope and how it differs from other related concepts such as optimism or wishful thinking. Let's go. Chat by here. This is that's so good. That's something literally that I've taught before on the topic of hope. Explore the significance of hope in our lives and in Christian faith. This could include discussion. Uh, this could include discussing the definition of hope and how it differs from that. Uh, reflect on the ways in which hope can sustain us in difficult times and gives us the strength to persevere through challenges. Hope in the Christmas story. Turn to the story of the birth of Jesus told in the Gospel of Luke and reflect on the ways in which it is a story of hope. That's that's so good. <laughs> This could include considering the prophecies and the coming of Messiah and how they offer hope to the people of Israel, as well as the message of hope and salvation that Jesus brings to the world. I'm just going to have chatbot do, do, do the sermon prep here. Hope in our world today. Reflect on how we can have hope in our world today, especially in times of uncertainty or difficulty. This could include discussing the role of faith, community, and service in cultivating hope. Encourage the congregation to think about practical ways they can cultivate hope in their own lives and in the lives of those around them. Conclusion. Recap the main point of the sermon and encourage the congregation to hold on to hope. Look at that. Look at those alliterations. Pastors love their uh, alliterations and chatbot already knows that. Offer a closing prayer. So some of these things you start to see as we're going through um, similar but just that it would make a, a five point outline like this is super, super impressive. I'm curious, I wonder what it'll do if I ask it to uh, make a Matt Chandler sermon for this Sunday. I wanna see what it comes up with for Matt Chandler. But, it, but look at its response. I'm sorry, but I'm not programmed to mimic or imitate specific individuals or their preaching styles. However, I can certainly help you craft a sermon on a particular topic or theme. Please let me know if there's anything specific you would like assistance with. Hmm. Okay, so it can't do a Matt Chandler sermon. It, it can't mimic his preaching style. Okay. So we're seeing some of the limitations here. How about authenticity of the Bible? Okay, same thing. <laughs> Authenticity of the Bible. Historical reliability of the Bible. Discuss the historical evidence for the reliability of the Bible. This could include information about the manuscripts and texts that make up the Bible, the discussion, discovery of ancient artifacts that support the historical accounts in the Bible, and the testimony 
of non-biblical sources that confirm the evidence and people described in the Bible. Reflect on the importance of using historical evidence to evaluate the authenticity of any document, including the Bible. The theological unity of the Bible. This is good. This is so good. Explore the unity and coherency of the Bible's message, despite being written over the course of many centuries by a diverse group of authors. This can include discussing the themes and teachings that run throughout the Bible, as well as the way in which the Old Testament points towards forward to the coming of Jesus in the New Testament. Reflect on the significance of this unity and coherency in terms of the Bible's authenticity and its status as the Word of God. The personal impact of the Bible. Discuss the ways in which the Bible has impacted the lives of individuals and communities throughout history. This can include sharing personal testimonies or examples from history of the transformative power of the Bible. Reflect on the importance of considering the personal impact of the Bible and evaluating its authenticity and its value as a source of guidance and inspiration. That's not bad. It's given some good things. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on AI and writing sermons and are they going to replace all of us at some point, especially pastors when it comes to preaching the word of God and saying all this? Well, I don't think we're there yet in any way. I think this is a great tool that could actually be really helpful just on the creative aspect of figuring out what you want to do. But I think one of the biggest things that I could see, even if it did get better at finding certain verses or being able to link together uh, more, and, and again, this is still kind of in its beta phase. It's going to continue to get better as time goes on, I'm sure. One of the biggest things that it's still going to be missing, though, that I'd say for us is so important is twofold is one it doesn't have that personal touch of a pastor who knows what his congregation needs to hear who knows what's going on in his church and in the world around him that would help benefit those who are in attendance and listening that sunday morning and secondly more importantly it doesn't have the aspect of the holy spirit working in and through them to guide them in the direction in which they should go with their message and saying the things that they need to say again this was pretty cool in that it gave a helpful tool that gave an outline here and kind of gave some general advice on which way you could take something which is super neat. Like I said earlier, there are a number of pastors that I've met throughout the years who, to say it kindly, kind of go all over the place with their message. And they make about 15 different points, all good things to say on a Sunday morning, but don't really have a clear, concise message that you can get at the end. No clear takeaway from it all. Just a kind of couple good stories here and there. Maybe it's a few passages that God really put on their heart, but it's not a cohesive message, that discipline of being able to make point A to point B and make it all connect to point C sometimes isn't there. And you can kind of tell from a pastor who hasn't been preaching for that long, uh, do that. This is kind of great in giving you like a clear outline of like, do this, then do this, then do this. And again, still leaving room for God to be able to work in and through that. Guys, but that is just my thoughts and my take on this. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you think AI is coming for all of us soon here? Or do you think that this is just a pretty cool, unique little tool here? that a number of people can use. I'm interested in the ways that maybe you guys might think that this could come in handy to help people. But if you like this video, check out this one right over here that YouTube thinks that you are gonna enjoy. But until next time, guys, know that you are valued and loved. And I'll see you soon.